All right. So, um, what we're doing today is a tutorial stream. This is for you guys viewing now and also for people viewing later on YouTube. Uh, this is intended to be a how-to for your very first Final Fantasy Randomizer seed. So, <clears throat> I'm using the live website beginner flag set. Um, what that's going to do is that's going to randomize some very basic things, but keep it very true to how vanilla plays. Um, so, things like... Uh, the floater chest in Marsh Cave uh, are going to have an incentivized item. Um, there's still going to be a key item in Castle Ordeals, a key item in Marsh Cave. Um, so basically, if there's a, a key item there in the normal game, there should still be a key item there. Um, with two very small changes, uh, the Mazamune is added as an incentive item to the pool, as is the Ribbon. Um, meaning I could open up a item in the, excuse me, uh, I could open up that chest that normally has the floater in it, an ice cave, and it could have the Mazmune or the ribbon. Um, what else is different? Um, the Titan's Trove flag is checked. Um, what that means is that the titan that asks for the ruby is moved over so you can't access those four chests for free from the backside. <clears throat> Enemy scaling is going to be from 77% to 130% of their normal stats. So if an enemy normally has 100 hit points, it could have anywhere from 77 to 130. Uh, there's a little bit of extra golden EXP from fights. You're going to get three times the normal value, plus 300. So that's going to make uh, grinding less of an issue. You aren't going to have to spend a whole lot of time doing that. There is normal 1.0 encounter rate on the overworld and dungeons, um, which means we haven't played with the encounter rate at all. Um, if it would... It, I will get as many random encounters as I would if I was playing the vanilla game. Under the Conveniences tab, uh, we have the free bridge turned on. So I'm going to start with the bridge, which is why I've already got this lit up. I won't have to actually find it. The early Sarda item means that if I talk to Sarda, I do not have to have killed the vampire before uh, I get the key item. Normally in the game, even though the ruby is behind the vampire, if somehow you were able to get the ruby before killing the vampire, you would still actually have to kill the vampire in order for Sarda to give you his item. Uh, early sage item. That means that the Circle of Sages in Crescent Lake will give me a key item before going to kill Lich. So if I get there with ship and TNT and I don't feel like killing Lich, I can go straight to the Sages and get a key item. And Early Ordeals means that the Castle Ordeals, which normally requires the crown to go through, I will not actually have to have the crown. So those are the big changes from Vanilla. Um, for anybody that is absolutely brand new, uh, often we will talk about seeds and flags, and all that really means the seed determines the RNG factor that goes into generating a particular ROM, and the flags are what is different about the game from Vanilla. So, with that in mind, we've talked about the uh, flag set and... Um, Oh, I guess we could talk about what items, uh, what locations are going to have key items. So, uh, I mentioned that it was anything in vanilla that it has a uh, key item, but just to refresh people's minds in case it's been a while, um, 
any of the, quote, main NPCs, NPCs that give you a quest item without needing to do something first, um, or without having to t turn in an item, rather, are going to give an incentive. So that is the King of Corneria, that is Princess Sarah after you rescue her from Garland, uh, Bicky the Pirates, uh, yes, Tiny Fairy, I wanted to use your tracker so that way uh, people could follow along at home and be able to see what I've got. Hey, Drawith, good to see you in here. Um, Bicky the Pirate, after taking out his pirate crew, is going to give us a key item. The Circle of Sages will give us a key item, as will Sarda in his cave, and the robot in the waterfall, and there will be one key item available for purchase in a shop. Uh, not necessarily uh, the desert caravan like it normally is. It could be in any of the shops throughout Corneria. So I will have to check, or uh, any of the shops throughout the, the game. So I will have to check the item shop in uh, Corneria, in Elfland, in Provoca, and one of them will have the key item that we need. Um, <clears throat> incentive chests. We have the chest in Marsh Cave that normally holds the crown that has the wizard trap tile in it, so we'll have to go to Marsh Cave. Uh, the Ice Cave Eye Chest that normally has the floater is incentivized, so we'll have to go there. The chest behind the vampire that normally holds the ruby is turned on, so we'll have to go there. Uh, the Corneria Locked Chest, so after I get the Mystic Key, that I will need to go check the chests in Castle Corneria. Castle Ordeals is incentivized, so we'll have to go through the, the Pillar Maze and check the item there. And the uh, Sea Shrine is incentivized, so we'll need to go hit up the Mermaids. The chest way off to the left side that normally holds the slab is incentivized. As is the chest in the Sky Castle that normally holds the Adamant. So those are going to have our incentive items. Like I said, those are going to be our key items that allow for progression, as well as the Mazamune and the Ribbon. Okay. So, <clears throat> pillars are normal in this flag set, correct? Let me double check that, JLo. Um, that is a good call. Uh, yes, pillars are normal in this, uh, which means that it is the vanilla flow through Castle Ordeals, and I may or may not remember how to get through that. <laughs> I play randomizer so much that I don't know what the vanilla is, so, uh, hopefully it won't trip us up too much, but that's a, a very good point. Um, so before I really make our, our party here... Let's talk about the different characters and what is good about them and what is not so good about them. Why you might want to take one character over another, and then eventually we'll make our party. Uh, so Fighter. Fighter is your average tank. He starts out with no magic. Uh, he has just the ability to equip a wide variety of both weapons and armor. He will get the most strength growth in the early game, and he will have the most HP consistently for a long time. The fighter is going to generally be your front row damage absorber. Um, with the very good armor that he gets between uh, endgame like dragon armor and Aegis shield and stuff like that, he will have a lot of absorb. And so you want to keep your fighter up front if you have one because he will soak up a lot of hits. Uh, yes, Cativ, uh, also pointing out that Dragon Armor and Aegis Shield have a lot of resistances on them, which help protect that knight against a lot of uh, elemental and status spells and stuff like that. The Thief. Thief starts out very weak. Um, Thief is not great for doing damage and doesn't have a whole lot of HP or defense. What the Thief does have, however, is very high... Uh, ability to run away. That doesn't sound great, but it can make a big difference over the course of a seed. Basically, the reason that you would take a thief is to be able to explore dungeons quickly and get yourself out of fights that you don't want to be in. 
Later on, after class change, uh, I didn't mention about the knight, but the knight gets level 1, 2, and 3 white magic spells. The thief similarly gets level 1, 2, 3, and 4 black magic spells. Now the nice thing about the thief, as opposed to the, the knight, is that the thief can learn any spells level 1 through 4, whereas the knight's spells pool is much more limited. <clears throat> um, knight spell charges and thief spell charges, once they're promoted start at level 15 so if you level up from 14 to 15 you get your first spell slot and every odd level thereafter you will get a spell charge until you have four spells of level one through three or one through four depending upon the class so if you level up or if you promote to knight and ninja at level 21 it will take you until level 29 to be able to get all of your spell charges Black Belt. Black Belt is very is very strong in the late game. Black Belt gets a lot of hit points, and Black Belt has a scaling based on level attack damage and armor built into its class. Black, Page, or Black Belt is not gear dependent, which is one big advantage for having a Black Belt. You don't rely on having particular weapons or armor to make the black belt good they will just over the course of the game get to be very strong on their own however it takes a lot of experience to level them up and black belt has a funny quirk about it the black belt before promotion gets four magic defense per level which is the highest of any class in the game so leveling up a black belt means that that black belt will not take much damage from spells, won't be very susceptible to uh, status effects, that sort of thing. But if you promote, that black belt goes from getting four magic defense per level down to one magic defense per level. And that can make a big difference over the course of a run. If you promote early and your black belt becomes a master, you severely limit their amount of magic defense that they have available to them. However, as mentioned previously with the Knight and Thief spell slots, they need to be able to gain levels while promoted in order to get those. So sometimes uh, Black Belts don't work well with a party because some of your party members will want to promote early and other party members will want to promote late. And that can be a problem. Red Mage. Red Mage is a general all-around character. He can wield a variety of weapons and use a decent amount of armor, though not as good as, say, a fighter or a ninja. Red Mage is also the only class in the game that can use both white magic and black magic, which can be a very strong asset. However, the Red Mage has a limited spell selection, uh, especially when you start talking about level 5 and beyond spells. Um, black magic, he can use anything level 1 to 4. White magic is a little bit more limited. He can use uh, slots 1 and 3 unpromoted in level 1. Uh, any of the level 2 spells, slots 1 and 3 in levels 3 and 4, I believe, as well. Um, he gets a, a few more, like slot 4 opens up after promoting to Red Wizard. Um, but generally, Red Mage is a safe pick because it will be able to do some of anything and often the ability to use both white magic and black magic will be very beneficial in your run. White mage is the healer. Uh, it's going to provide you safety. You are going to be guaranteed to have life and life two if you take a white mage, as well as the exit spell to be able to immediately leave any dungeon that you find yourself needing to escape from. White mage can do wonders to get you out of a pinch but doesn't offer a lot in the way of offensive capabilities. Often you will see runners that want to play it safe take a white mage, and people that prioritize offense or going more quickly tend to shy away from taking a white mage in their party. Black mage has the most offensive capability from spells available, period. He can learn any spell level 1 through 8 after promoting and gets the spell charges to be able to cast all of them. The other strong advantage that a white mage has, or a black mage has, is 
in the early game, Black Mage has a very good run chance, um, being second only to the Thief, actually, until about level 20. So Black Mage is going to generally do a great job of accelerating your early game and is going to be, offer, uh, going to be able to offer a lot of damage um, over the course of long dungeons in the late game by having a large amount of spells available to him. So that being said, what do we want to take for our party? Well, I like having a tank, and the fighter is a good, reliable tank. So we're going to bring him along. Um, Thief, I am going to take along, even though I don't always like to take Thieves. Uh, I'm going to take him to show off his ability to be able to run and provide you the uh, ability to escape encounters that you don't want to get into. So if we find ourselves dealing with something particularly nasty, I'll be able to run away from them. I'm going to take a black mage. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going to take a red mage uh, because the availability of white magic and black magic is going to be great. Um, hopefully he gets decent spells in the slots that he is able to learn. And uh, generally an all-around good pick. Um, Black Mage. Uh, I love Black Mages. Um, I will be the first to admit it, and whether it's right, wrong, or indifferent, um, people have debated. Uh, but the Black Mage is going to guarantee that I have the really strong Black Magic spells. Uh, Nuke for offensive capability. Ice 3 is another very good damaging spell. Uh, spells like Brack and Bane for instant kills. Quad X. Um, Fast and Temper for getting through long prolonged fights, um, warp, all of these things. I, I want to have access to all of them and uh, the ability to run away and have a lot of offensive uh, power in the early game means that I want to take Black Mage. <clears throat> all right, so we have our fighter, we have our thief, our red mage and our black mage. We have our party and now we are ready to go. Um, just as a foreword, uh, before the seed begins, I am not going to be playing to try and prioritize speed. Uh, I am going to be playing to prioritize learning. Um, what I mean by that is often I am going to, uh, look at all the shops and talk about what options to buy before I buy anything. And I'm going to be playing a little bit slower than I would if I was doing a race. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to also go ahead and show off the uh, the fact that the king will give you an item before you actually rescue the princess. Um, that is another convenience. I don't think I mentioned it. Um, but if you find yourself in a situation where Temple of Fiends is particularly nasty and you can't get through it, you can always go talk to the king and get a key item and maybe get progression that way. So, weapons. We have a short dagger, which is pretty much garbage. Hand axe is going to do okay damage. Short sword is way too expensive to be good. <clears throat> uh, iron shield for very cheap. Copper bracelet for not that bad of price. And cloth armor is meh. White magic. Uh, fog. Fog raises defense on a single character. It's not great, but it's a spell that's available to us. A Ice is going to give ice resistance to all characters, but in this slot, this second slot here, that means that it is only learnable to a white mage or a white wizard. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use that. Cure 4 is in slot 3, which means our knight after promotion will be able to learn it, as will our red mage now. He will be able to learn this. Harm 3 in the fourth slot does good damage to undead enemies, but it's in slot four, which means I'm not going to be able to get it until I promote. Uh, Knight and Red Wizard will be able to learn this, but not Red Mage. So if I go to Jack and tell him I want to learn Harm 3, sorry, you can't learn that. <clears throat> Black Magic. 
blind. Uh, blind is a bad status effect in this game. It really just does not do much. Um, I think it lowers accuracy and evade by a small amount and is it's not great. It, it just doesn't really help enough, um, not compared to the other level one spells that are available. Ice 3 is the second best AoE spell in the game uh, that a black mage can learn. Um, it is going to do <clears throat> group ice damage to all enemies. Uh, I believe the total damage it can do ranges from 80 to 320. So Ice 3 is going to do a lot to be able to carry us through most of the game. Confuse is a spell that works on all enemies. Uh, well, it, it targets all enemies in the enemy party and attempts, attempts to confuse them. A confused enemy on its turn will... It will hit another enemy. Technically, it casts fire. Um, it's weird just how the game is programmed. Um, but Confuse will also work on Carry. Carry the Fiend of Fire is weak to status ailments, and so using Confuse on Carry can get you a free fight sometimes. Warp is a spell, if you don't know, that lets you go back up one level in a dungeon. It is a very, very handy utility spell, and I will show off why when we get to the Ice Cave. So, what spells do we buy and why do uh, and where do we put them? First off, I want Ice 3 on both of my Black Magic casters. Uh, for the reason of being able to use AoE on everybody, that is going to be great. I'm also going to pick up Confuse for my Black Mage specifically, so that way I can uh, Confuse carry if we get to that point. I'm also going to pick up Warp as a utility spell for both Red Mage and Black Mage to be able to navigate dungeons a little more freely. I'm also going to take a uh, Cure 4 on my Red Mage, so that way I have somebody that can heal. Uh, I'm going to stop and buy the Iron Shield, just so that way my Knight has some defense. Uh, party members, let's actually look at this view. So party members in battle, the first character has a, an approximately 50% chance to be targeted by enemies, followed by the Thief has a 25% chance to be targeted, and third and fourth slot have a 12.5% chance to be targeted by enemy attacks. So if you have someone with high absorb, you want to put them in the front of your party to take as many hits as possible and shave off that physical damage. <clears throat> in the item shop, we have... Okay, we have our vendor item. So... Cube is our vendor item, and it costs 1400 so I can't buy it just yet, but I definitely need to remember that I need to come back for the cube. So, um, let's see. Uh, softs aren't available here. I thought softs were always available in Corneria. I thought we always made pure potions and soft potions available in Corneria because of safety. Interesting. Um, I might have to talk to the devs about that one. Uh, okay. Um, I am going to pick up some tents. Um, I don't. I don't particularly actually need them, but I'm picking them up as a safety measure. Um, if there were something nasty in Temple of Fiends uh, before getting to Garland, it is going to allow us to go ahead and save out. Um, it is also worth noting that. Uh, if you save, you can reset out of the in menu and get back to here faster. Um, I didn't do it there, but I could have. And if I wasn't talking, I probably would have. So here we have our first fight. Um, I'm going to run away with the first two characters and throw out Ice Threes with the latter two characters. Uh, the goal here being to just clear the fight as quickly as possible. If I get experience points from it, great. And if I don't, I'm not too broken up about it. In this case, Ice 3 goes off. We get three, uh, two extra levels on everybody. We'll go ahead and use the tent and come check out our items that are available in the free chests in Temple of Fiends. Yeah, Ice 3 Warp and Cure 4 is a great selection of uh, spells to start off with. I'm very happy about that. Okay, here we found an Opal Shield. Uh, Opal Shield is one of the highest absorbed shields in the game. Uh, that'll be great news for us late game. 
However, there is one better shield, which is the Aegis Shield. Uh, while the Opal Shield provides the best absorb in the game, the Aegis Shield matches it and also provides resistances, uh, whereas the Opal Shield provides no resistances by itself. So we get to Garland without much event. Um, my front two characters don't have much to do in this fight, so they're just going to punch, and my back two characters are going to Ice 3. Uh, Garland actually managed to survive a single Ice 3, but definitely not two of them, and we get to rescue the princess. So here the princess gives us the tail that's going to let us class change, and we want to prioritize changing class as soon as possible. Uh, that knight, or that fighter really wants to become a knight. He wants to be able to use really good uh, endgame gear. The thief, once it becomes a ninja, is going to be able to use a wide variety of weapons and armor, and is going to go from being a run bot to being an active member of the party. Uh, Red Mage will learn, uh, will be able to learn more spells as well as equip a few new weapons, and uh, Black Mage is going to get uh, access to the late game magics, as well as, I believe the Cat Claw is the only uh, item that he gets. Um, only equipable item he gets from the uh, class change. Uh, yes, JLo, early tail is in fact great. Uh, I always want to see that as soon as possible. Uh, the king gave the ship. I just forgot to mark that. Um, so now I have the ship, so I'm going to use the ship to travel over taking the land path because it's going to make this journey to Provoka a little bit faster. Um, I always want to go to uh, all of my levels of magic as quickly as possible. And the pirates in Corneria are going to give me um, another key item as well. Uh, oh, I have a little bit of money. I, I could have considered buying the cube. I don't technically need it just yet, so I'm not that, that worried about it. So let's see, level 2 magic. Uh, level 2, life 2, heal 3. Okay, so this red mage... Uh, is huge. Um, level 3, Fire 3, Ice 2. Probably not going to need Ice 2 because I've already got uh, Ice 3. Um, but let's go ahead and get some cells. Uh, fire 3, best fire elemental magic available. Uh, Zap is an AoE time magic instant death. So I might use that throughout the course of the, the match. Uh, on the Red Mage, I'm going to pick up Fire 3 for offensive capabilities, as well as Heal 3 and Life 2. So that way he has a good spread of uh, healing magic and offensive magic. So this spell list right here, uh, this is why Red Mage is insane. Um, sometimes you will get a, a spell selection that lands like this, where Red Mage just has everything you need. Uh, at this point... I am confident that I could beat the game if I just killed off the Thief and Black Mage. I am not going to do any, quote, Dan strats, um, where you kill off a character to funnel the XP into other party members. Um, just know that this is the kind of seed where when you see this, you definitely can. Uh, Cure 3, Heal 3, Life 2 being available on both Knight and Red Wizard means that you don't really need anything else. So we'll check the weapon shop. Uh, silver swords are okay. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a scimitar. It's not great, but it's also super cheap. It's also one of the few weapons that uh, Thief can actually equip. Uh, okay, so what would I do with a bad magic selection? So, with a bad magic selection, um, keep in mind I still do have access to level 3 and 4, and the likelihood that you won't see a um, good spell in any of the first four levels is very low. Uh, but what do you do if you have a bad magic selection? Because it happens, right? Um, sometimes we, we come in, we see a seed, and there's just... It's garbage. You've got lots of blind, and uh, it's just, it's not good. Um, in that case, if you have literally nothing 
then you buy a weapon on the fighter and you you swing a sword. And uh, it's not great, but it'll get you through. Um, it, it's kind of hard to say what what to do with a really, really bad la list of magic because I, I can't think of a, a list of spells that would be just total trashed here uh, between, like, the first two levels of, of magic. Um, uh, I just got a pro cape. What? What? Uh, hold, please. That is definitely the seed and flags that I just generated. Um, there isn't a pro cape in the incentive list, is there? No. Are there more? There are. Okay. So I, I, I think what has happened is I think that there are more incentive locations than uh, items. Uh, thank you, Tiny Fairy. Yes, exactly. Uh, there are more incentive locations than items. Um, so, in this case, the pirates gave me a pro cape uh, rather than giving me something that I was expecting to see. Um, which is okay. Pro cape uh, gives me eight absorb. It's actually better than that iron shield that the fighters got. Um, so we'll take it. Um, while we are here, we will pick up uh, chain armor and wood armor for our characters. Um, I guess I'll buy a wood helmet. I probably wouldn't normally buy this much gear. I would probably just buy the uh, chain armor and call it good. Um, I'm doing this just because, like, if you're new to the game and you're trying to play conservatively and safely, um, the, I'm... I'm trying to show how you could prepare yourself. So there we go. So I saved and I, I reset just to uh, save myself a little bit of time. Um, so from here, we have the cube available for purchase. We have uh, Marsh Cave with one incentive location. And we have some loose chests that could have TNT in it. So, where do we go from here? Um, we have three chests we could check on Matoya's cave. And if we're going to play uh, with kind of a new player strategy, um, let's be as conservative as possible. So, we're going to get all of the free chests that are available to us. So, we'll stop by Matoya's cave first, which technically I could have hit up on the way to uh, Provoka. money and a house not bad um, so now I've got some cash I'm gonna go ahead and stop off at Corneria and uh, save so that way or uh, and buy the cube so that way I don't have to, to keep remembering and I can come back and get it so we took out the pirates even though they didn't have anything for us Yeah, exactly, JLo. Uh, if we're going to have to go to Marsh Cave, we might as well uh, pick up all the items for safety as possible. Yeah, Nicola, the, it, it's possible that there will be a good item in Matoya's Cave. Um, it is also possible that there will be garbage. Um, I also know that I will definitely be coming back to Matoya's Cave later in the game. Because I will need to turn in the crystal to get the herb so I can get the uh, mystic key. Often, when I am playing, I will wait to go to Matoya's cave until I'm turning in the crystal. Because I would rather go there once and do everything than go there twice and not see anything good. Sometimes that means I will miss out on a good item until later in the game. Which is unfortunate. But... That's 
kind of the price that I pay for trying to do everything all at once and save a little bit of time. So again, I'm just resetting to save time. Um, it's not important that you reset. Uh, you could just menu through the text and it's fine. Um, the only reason I'm doing it is force of habit as uh, I run a lot of races these days. I'm taking more fights than I normally do here on the waters. Um, there's not going to be anything dangerous, uh, but the, this is just to get extra experience before I go into Marsh Cave. Um, get as much HP and spell charges and etc. and etc. before uh, before going into those places. Um, again, oftentimes I'm going to do run run nuke nuke strats, uh, even though it's not the nuke spell. Uh, it gets the point across. With the two characters that don't have AOE options, they're going to try and run away. With the characters that do, they're going to uh, throw out a spell that will kill the whole enemy party. Uh, now on those Gurwolves there, I got a first strike. If you get a first strike and you run away, you are guaranteed to succeed at running away. So rather than doing run run nuke strats, I went ahead and ran away with all characters so I can just get out. Uh, so dwarves didn't have a whole lot for us. We'll go ahead and tent up, and we'll be on our way to Elfland. So at this point, we've gotten every chest available to us uh, pre-marsh. So all that's left to go do is do some shopping at Elfland, and uh, then we'll head into Marsh Cave. All right, so level three, what do you have for us? Um, again, I don't really need to buy silver swords. I could, uh, but my magic selection is so... Oh, okay, and the magic selection just keeps getting better as we now have level three nuke. No, I, I said learn nuke, though. So now we're broken, and we're cheating with both hands. Um can't learn ruse that's a little bit unfortunate let's be honest i'm never going to cast fog 2 over nuke um, fog 2 raises the whole party's uh absorb which is a good spell but i'm never going to cast that over nuke um a mute prevents anybody in the party from being muted uh it is very mediocre i wouldn't get it uh, level four, Hex for Heal to Life. Okay, uh, so let the good times roll as we keep getting good things available for us. Uh, level four, okay, so, so let's pretend for a second that this is our level one spell list, right? This is a spell list that is mediocre. In this case, if this was my level one spell list, I would get Quake because it is an area of effect instant death chance and I would rely on Quake getting me through a lot of my fights early game um, in the early game most enemies have a very low magic defense so a spell like Quake or Zap uh, or Bane can do a lot to carry you through fights if you don't have any real offensive op options available to you I will also show off another reason for having Quake later uh, got some heal potions available here. Okay, silver bracelet, pro ring. These are things that we want to keep in mind for later, um, especially these pro rings. Pro rings are eight absorbed for any character. That also provides uh, resistance to death magic. Um, spells like rub and uh, toxic and crack. Uh, maybe not crack. No, I think crack is actually earth. Uh, yeah, Saber Man, this is uh, this is pretty much a free seed. Um, this is a great vanilla intro seed. If this is like your first experience playing randomizer, to get you eased into learning how to route and make decisions in the game, 
um, while not doing much to teach you about how to uh, deal with adversity. So uh, hopefully after this we can uh, see a seed that forces a little more adversity and decision making here. So uh, in Marsh Cave there are two paths we can go. We can go up or we can go down. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and check all the chests along the way just to have full knowledge of everything available to us in the game. So I'm going to go up first as it's a quick check for four chests. And we have warp and houses. So uh, this isn't going to take us long. Again, run, run, nuke strats where I'm throwing out sweeping spells to kill anything. And we're already level eight. This is, uh, this is very safe for Marsh Cave generally, uh, particularly in this flag set where enemy skills and spells aren't shuffled. Um, I'm not going to see anything too, too nasty here. Uh, enemy skills and spell shuffle uh, refers to enemies that have uh, skills like blaze or heat or something like that. Um, and if enemy script shuffle is on, uh, those scripts can end up on different enemies. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Script shuffle means that the scripts themselves are randomized in addition to what enemy they land on. Um, I believe. Okay, uh, so they're actually different spells. So here we go. The, the flags are enemy scripts, which is which enemy has which script. So... If that is checked, but not the other flag, then that means that um, the Medusa script, how it normally is, that where it has like glance that can petrify you and um, uh, I, I don't remember all of them. They might have Brack or something like that. Um, but that script, that list of skills and spells would be shuffled onto a different enemy. Uh, enemy skills slash spells means that the scripts themselves have different skills and spells than they normally do. In this case, however, both of those are off, and we're not going to have to worry about that. <clears throat> so here we're doing more run run nuke strats. That's going to be a common theme. Uh, there aren't going to be a lot of fights that I directly uh, choose I really want to take this fight so I'm going to have everybody try and do offensive options um, until later in the game okay flame sword is great um, that finally gives our uh, fighter a really good option in combat um, we're also going to take this opportunity to go ahead and trade the um, the scimitar down to the red maid so if for some reason I run out of spell charges, he's got an option too. Um, uh, heal Helm. We found that here in uh, Marsh Cave. So that's a usable item that if you use it in combat, will cast a heal spell and restore a little bit of HP to each party member. We're going to stick that on the Thief. Um, so if I feel like I want to, to play a little bit cautiously, the Thief can go ahead and use the Heal Helm in mid-combat. And we'll use some warp charges to get back out of Marsh Cave, save our progress that we found those items, and dive the south side now. And a lot of this early game is probably going to be uh, relatively the same. Uh, a lot of running away and throwing out spells, and eventually we'll make it through here. Marsh Cave is Marsh Cave. Unfortunately, we have to dive it, because this is where progression is.
All right. Uh, maybe. So in this room, this is a treasure chest that is empty. The reason it is empty is this is what's called a linked chest. This chest here is linked to one of the chests in the north room, the north side room of Marsh Cave. I believe it's actually one of the two in the bottom left room in the uh, north uh, the north stairway. Because I checked that other chest, I already got the contents out of the linked pair. So if I check those top rooms, that bottom room will always be empty. Yeah, I, I don't really have any interest in fighting you. Go away. Okay, now, this room here also has a linked chest. It is linked to another chest here on this floor. So rather than checking that chest, I'm going to check the linked chest, which is over here in this room. If these enemies ever let me go through. I believe it's technically this chest that is linked to that other chest. Because I checked this one, I don't need to check the other one. <clears throat> okay, so we've gotten to the wizard trap tile. I'm going to use a heal potion on our black mage just to make sure everybody's HP looks pretty good. This is pretty good. I haven't taken a whole lot of damage in this dungeon. So, the wizards. Wizards are unrunnable, and one thing you'll notice is that this command is now wait instead of run. And one of the changes that the randomizer has available is it will tell you which fights are unrunnable by changing this run command to wait. So you know if you try and run away, you're not going to succeed. However, I'm actually going to do that because rather than spending time on the animation of the fighter or thief doing basically no damage... Uh, I would rather just get through the fight very quickly. Because Nuke is going to take these wizards down with no problem. Because they definitely don't have 1 to 300 hit points, or 1 to 400 hit points. Uh, and we get a ribbon. So, again, this is another good item, but uh, it's not our progression. So we have to keep checking more chests here. Fortunately, there are exactly two more chests. So I know that one of these two chests has to have the TNT. So not that one. Come on. Let me go, you silly werewolves. Oops, went over too far. And TNT. So, I knew that had to be TNT because this is the only chest that was left for me to check. Um, and TNT is not an incentive item. So, because the last check avail chest available to check was not an incentive, I knew it had to be a TNT because TNT is going to let us progress. Now we can go ahead and warp on out of here. And use a house to restore our spell charges. Now, the bug in uh, Final Fantasy 1 has actually been fixed in the randomizer, where if you use a house and you quit uh, out of the game, you, do a, you shut the power off or something like that and leave, then uh, you do still restore your spell charges. Um, in the vanilla game, the restoring of the spell charges actually happened after the game saved, um, which is a little bit funny. Uh, also very trolly. That bug has been fixed.
All right, so our next stop is going to be to go to the dwarves um, to pick up the TNT. There hasn't been, or uh, to pick up, to get the canal for turning in the TNT. Um, there hasn't really been much to talk about routing-wise. Unfortunately, it's been a very linear path so far, um, but that's about to change. We'll go ahead and save. Um, Pro rings were here, right? Yeah. Um, it's a little more expensive than I want to pay for just yet. I'm not that worried about it. Um, so that's... That's something that you also have to, to kind of keep in mind as you're playing through the game, is budgeting your money and figuring out uh, what to do with it. Um, I'm about to, to go out of the inner sea and be able to access Melmond and Crescent Lake, and uh, I want to be able to pick up some level 5 spells, since I'm very close to learning uh, level 5 magic um, based on my levels. So if I see anything that's very good for level 5, I want to be able to prioritize that over um, uh, prioritize level 5 magic over buying a single pro ring. All right. We robbed those chests already, and now we've got uh, TNT, so we're going to go turn that into Narek. And we get our crown. Uh, that's Narek on this. Okay, so we've got our canal. So now what? Now we have a couple of choices. Um, we have the option of going to uh, Melmond, buying level 5 magic, and then to Ice Cave, or uh, Earth Cave, rather. We also have the option of going to Crescent Lake, talking to the Sages, checking out level 6 magic. Um, in this case, I am going to make a pit stop at Melmond to check level 5 spells. And then because we have early sages on, uh, I'm going to go check out what key item is available from the Circle of Sages. Um, okay, so Saber, Hold, Fire 2. Um, these are spells that most people would think are very garbage. Um, Saber is a great spell in that it lets the caster uh, increase their own... Uh, yeah, I, I kind of glossed on over that, uh, PN, uh, Panzer Dragon, uh, Vanilla Canal. One of these, one of the things in the, um, the beginner flag set is that key item turn-ins are vanilla. So turning in the TNT is going to give me the canal, uh, turning in the crown is going to give me the crystal and so on. Um, uh, Saber buffs the caster. Hello, Will Cleosis, how you doing? Uh, Saber buffs the caster's uh, physical attack power um, by a very large amount. Uh, casting Saber in battle will allow whoever's casting it to do a lot of damage. Uh, it's the spell that's associated with the um, power gauntlet normally. If you have the power gauntlet and you use it in battle, it casts Saber on whoever's using it. Uh, it's also usable by mages. And uh, say you've got a, a red wizard that has the Vorpal or Sunsword or Masmune. Um, Red Wizard can do a good job of putting Saber to use. Hold is another one of those status elemental spells and inflicts stun. Uh, stun has two advantages. Uh, whoever is stunned cannot actually take an action in battle. And if a character is stunned and an attack, a physical attack, is thrown against them, they cannot evade it. So if you can stun an enemy with high evasion, you will be able to land any hit and ignore their evasion. 
Uh, fire 2 doing an average uh, area of effect damage for fire. Um, fire 2 is the least good of the... Uh, the least good of the uh, AoE spells. Um, in that it, it does the... The, it does the lowest damage tied with Lit 2, but more enemies resist fire than enemies resist lightning, um, which is why I say that Fire 2 is the weakest of the AoE spells. Um, level 5 has Exit and Cure 3. Uh, I would like to be able to pick these up, but I'm not uh, sure I'll be able to pick those up after class change with the Red Wizard. I think I'll be able to get Exit. I think Slot 3 is a slot that I can learn, but I'm not 100% sure. Um not going to worry about buying these spells just yet. Uh, how much variance in enemy HP and EXP can there be from vanilla? Um, so, in variance in HP, enemy, and EXP. So, the maximum variance... Uh, well, Fire 2 and Lit 2 will have this, the same damage base. They, they do the same amount of damage. Um, Lit 3 does more damage than Fire 3, but Lit 2 and Fire 2 do the same damage. Um, so the, the variance of EXP from vanilla on this seed, or, uh, HP from vanilla on this seed is 77% to 130%. So an enemy that has 100 hit points could have as few as 77, as many as, uh, 130. The most possible on the randomizer is 20% to 500%, um, where an enemy with 100 hit points could have anywhere from 20 hit points to 500. Level 5 White Red Wizard learnable or slots 1 and 2. Well, that's a bit unfortunate, because those are the two spells that I don't care about in level 5. Uh, thank you, JLo. I, I appreciate that. Um, in the as far as EXP from enemies, in this particular flag set, I'm going to get three times the normal EXP with a plus 300 boost for each enemy in battle. Um, I think it's per enemy in battle. I'm not 100% sure on that. It might be uh, it might be a flat per battle bonus. Um, I'm not 100% sure. It also gets scaled based on uh, uh, EXP percents. Um, a lot of times I, I just don't pay a, a whole lot of attention to the, um, the actual experience points numbers, aside from, like, knowing what fight is a good fight. It is per enemy. Thank you, JLo. I appreciate that. Um, uh, so now we're in Crescent Lake. We're gonna talk to the sages. We're gonna see what our, uh, key item is here. I still have not seen a single soft potion. Uh, this is concerning. I like soft potions. I would like to be able to buy them. I don't want to end up in a position where I have some party members that are petrified and not be able to revert that. That armor's kind of garbage. Uh, level 6. I think I will be able to learn Fade after class change. Um, Brack I can learn now. Fast I can learn now. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and pick up fast. Oh, we can't afford that. Never mind. We're not going to pick that up. Uh, yeah, JLo, soft potions are supposed to be guaranteed in Corneria, but they weren't available for purchase in Corneria, um, which has me a bit concerned. Uh, sages. Which of you is the sage? Oh, you. You're the sage. You're the sage. And I just got the loot. Uh, and we bought the cube from the vendor item. I did, right? Yeah. There's my cube. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Will. Uh, I will I will show you here in a, a bit. But yeah. Um, I did not have soft potions available. I was very confused by that. Uh, 
Okay, so uh, since we, we've got Wilkleosis and Meridian uh, in chat, we're going to take a momentary detour from uh, running the seed just to uh, show that, in fact, uh, soft potions were not available for purchase. Man, I have played, uh, I've played too many seeds that have lower encounter rates. Okay, thanks, Will. I appreciate it. Uh, I, I've played too many seeds that have lowered encounter rates, and it feels so bad now uh, anytime that I have to go back to a, a vanilla encounter rate seed. Um, so unfortunately, in this case, the sages gave us uh, the... Uh, loot, which is a required item. It is progression at the end of the game, but it's not something we need now. So our only option available to us again is Earth Cave. Uh, so we went from our only option being Marsh Cave to now our only option being Earth Cave. So I haven't really gotten to talk about interesting routing decisions yet. Uh, but yeah, here we are in Corneria, and we have Pure Potions. And we don't have sauce. Hi, Meridian. I'm in Carnaria. I don't have soft potions. In fact, I have not seen any soft potions uh, in the Southern Hemisphere at all. Yep. Uh, seed and flags are in my title, Will. No, I do not have script shuffled. Is it linked to that? There's no script shuffle, no enemy spell or skill shuffle. So if it's linked to those flag sets, that would explain it. Interesting. But now I'm in a position where I'm going into Earth Cave, which has Paralisks uh, and Cockatrices. Or Cockatrices, not Paralisks, rather. Uh, so now I'm going to be in a position where I could be petrified and I have no soft potions. Because they weren't available in any of the shops in the summer, uh, Southern Hemisphere. I mean, yeah, there'll be an on rack, but um, I I don't have softs. They weren't in Provoke, and I just missed them, were they? Oh, that might have been. Well, actually, let's get our spell charges back. Okay. So, Earth Cave. There's a couple of chests that we can check here on the first floor. So we're going to go check those off. Uh, I just realized that I have warp, and I did not use warp to uh, get back to the entrance of the dungeon and make the trek to check these chests faster. 
Um, that is something that you will often see runners do is check the, the north room uh, and then warp back and then go check the south rooms if they're checking these chests. Uh, so what are we going to find here? So there is an incentive chest here on Earth Cave. And uh, it's the one after the vampire. So that's going to give us something that has to open up progression. It's got to be either the canoe. No, actually, it has to be the canoe. Um, it has to be the canoe or uh, the ruby is going to be available in one of these chests. And uh, Sarda will give me the canoe. Uh, because at this point, I am confident that I need the canoe in order to progress. Um, I'm going to take a moment just to show something off. Uh, this is the Hall of Giants. And uh, if you hear runners talk about it, they're talking about this area in particular, where there's like trap tiles on every uh, step. Um, but one thing I wanted to show off real quick is that, uh, yes, there is the giant and iguana fight. But it's not actually every step uh, is that fight. There are actually two different trap tiles here. And I guess this other one is just giants. Okay. Uh, yes, JLo. If uh, if we do find the canoe that opens up all of those dungeons and ice cave and ordeals both have an incentive location um, which would mean that i could likely get uh yes will that is something that i've been meaning to to show off uh, i will absolutely show that off here in a minute um so what will Cleos is, is talking about uh for those that might not know is that uh as you're walking around and you take these random encounters, what actually happens is in the game's code, it's incrementing a step counter. And every time that step counter gets incremented, uh, it rolls an RNG value against the, uh, call it threat level of the tile that you're walking on. Where if the number that is rolled is, uh, it's either above or below the threat number. I don't remember exactly the details. Uh, you get into a random encounter on that step. So as I'm walking, I just got into a random encounter. If, however, you walk along the bottom row of tiles in any room with a door. So see how there's this door right here, right? So this tile and every tile on this row inside the room are completely safe. As long as I'm walking on these tiles, I will never get into a uh, less than or equal to. Thank you, Meridian. Uh, as I'm walking on these tiles, I will never get into a fight. Uh, the same is also true of the door tile itself and the tile below the door. So if I, oops, if I keep running back and forth here, I never get into an encounter. So any step, uh, any tile in front of a door, the door itself, or the bottom row of a room is free from encounters. Except except for trap tiles. And uh, something that was just pointed out to me recently, if you look on my screen right now, see how this door there's the gray of the door as it opens and the little wavy, dark yellow particles above the walls. See how it's not along the door tile itself? That means that there's a trap tile here. So something that's not very well known, and I, I might be getting part of that uh, incorrect, uh, but uh, basically you can kind of get tipped off to trap tiles.
or at least trap dials right in front of a door. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's something I learned very recently. It's not something that a lot of people know. All right, so time to go kill us a vampire. So there's still a couple of chests here. And again, I'm checking all of these chests because it's possible that one of these rooms has a ruby and we need that ruby in order to progress. Hmm. I just realized I picked up a coral sword and that's better than a scimitar. A soft potion. Those are a rare commodity these days. <clears throat> oh, giant sword's better than scimitar as well. Sorry I don't have uh, some more interesting commentary for these fights. Um, I have spells that are way too good. Everybody say hi to the bats. Everybody say bye to the bats. Um. Also, Quake, despite being an instant death spell, does work on undead, as evidence by this fight. Hey, you're welcome, ICB16. I hope you're enjoying the run. We got a, a little bit of a bonkers spell set, so um, it, unfortunately it's been rather easy. Um, I'm, I was kind of hoping that we could get something that would be a little bit more challenging, but uh, this is a nice seed to play along with if you're uh, very new to the game and want to kind of experience... Uh, a little bit of what the randomizer has to throw at you without uh, challenging yourself too, too much. Yes, even undead can fall down deadly chasms. This is exactly right, Panzer Dragon. Everybody say hi to the vampire. Everybody say bye to the vampire. Cause he's definitely not surviving two nukes. And... No, like, for real, though. And canoe. There we go. I suppose, technically, that could have been the rod rather than the canoe if the ruby had been in uh, Earth uh, before and uh, Sarda had the canoe. Yes, exactly, J-Lo. Uh, Quake is an Earth Elemental spell and Undead do not resist Earth Element, which means they uh, are susceptible to Quake. So time to talk to the Titan. And you'll notice that normally the Titan... Well, if we weren't getting into fights every five steps... 
<clears throat> Normally the Titan steps in, stands in this spot right here and blocks your path. Instead he has been moved over to the left. Um, this is the Titan's Trove flag. It prevents people from going if they don't have the ruby. Uh, which I don't have the ruby. I was just thinking that we were going to find the ruby. I didn't actually find the ruby. I'm a derp. Ignore me. All right. Um, so now that we have the canoe, now we have choices. For the first time in the game, we actually have choices about where we want to go. So, we could do three different dungeons at this point. We could go north to uh, the uh, Castle Ordeals. We could go to the river system by Crescent Lake and do Volcano. Or we could go over and do the Ice Cave. So let's kind of talk about and reason out some reasons to do each of these things as soon as I get on my boat. So, our characters are all level 13, and we have vanilla scripts and spells, which means that everything that is normally in dungeons is going to be in those dungeons. So... Ice Cave is going to have uh, Sorcerers with Death Touch. It is going to have Mages with level 3 magic spells. It is going to have Paralisks that have Stone Touch, as well as Cockatrices with Stone Touch. Um, frost Wolves, Frosties, Frost Giants, um, lots of Frost and Blizzard. And Castle Ordeals is going to have Medusas and Sarias on the way. That could also petrify us. Um, it's going to have Catmen. Um, so both places have some danger. And unfortunately, we only have this one soft potion, which uh, I would really like to have more, but that's our life. So that's what we get. Um, that being said, we have Warp which means that we don't have to do two loops of Ice Cave. We could get by with just doing one. Um, so that is something that is making me strongly consider going to Ice Cave. We have good magic for Ice Cave. Fire 3, Nuke, Ice 3, all of those are going to be good. Uh, no, Ambush Raid is not shuffled, Will. You're right. Um... So, Will Cleos is pointing out some of his knowledge that uh, mages have a high rate of ambush, um, which is bad. However, they're not a very common encounter. Um, but level 3 spells could easily wreck our day. So, what do you do in this situation? What do you think, chat? Should we go to Ice Cave, which is probably a little bit more dangerous, but has more chests for us to check? Or do we go to Castle of Ordeals, which is shorter but has fewer chests? Okay, thank you, Meridian. Thank you for looking that out. Uh, yes, Panzer Dragoon. Also pointing out that uh, we could hit up Volcano instead of doing uh, Ice or Ordeals. I would like to go to uh, the location that has an incentive item. Um, so I would prioritize, um, uh, I would prioritize either Ice Cave or Ordeals myself, um, but that is also an option we could check out the Volcano. How do we get to Castle Ordeals? Isn't that in the Northern Hemisphere? You're absolutely right, Sebus. It is in the Northern Hemisphere. Let me show you, and that's a good reason for us to go to Castle Ordeals, because this is going to be a learning experience. So time for knowledge. So, even though Castle Ordeals is in the north, you can, in fact, get there by boat. Yeah, I agree, Will. Life 2 with uh, life two on the Red Mage is definitely upping the plausibility of Ice Cave. 
Uh, and if it weren't for wanting to show off how to get to ordeals with a boat, then uh, I would be going to Ice Cave. So, in case you forget, you can always use B Select to see your map. Um, so, now we are in the Northern Hemisphere. We've gone south. And this is where Castle Ordeals is. So if we look over here, here's Castle Ordeals. The way to get there by boat is to come north through this uh, isthmus. I think that's what this is called. Uh, also, I can run away from this fight. I got a first strike on it. Uh, by running, or by going north through here. Oh my goodness, so many encounters. So many encounters. Um, this canoe, or the this river area right here, is what lets you get to Castle Ordeals. Uh, warp spell access for Ice Cave Trick. Um, yes, ice and, ice and Ordeals are both incentivized. Uh, warp is also available to us. So uh, we're, we're going to show that off here. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and do Castle Ordeals. And uh, it is the vanilla maze, but uh, I am bad, and I'm going to hope... Oh, I failed. Uh, I did not remember correctly. So, if you remember incorrectly, you can always use warp to go back to the last pillar. So even though that pillar took me back to the entrance, you can use warp to go back. JLo pointing out that it's always the bottom, and if I was a, a real good Final Fantasy player, I would know that. Uh, but I'm bad. <laughs> I, I play too much randomizer, I forget these vanilla things. So Zombles looks like rolled up on hit points. That's a little bit unfortunate. But they can't roll up too high on this. So, there is a chest here. It is one of the linked chests. It is linked to a chest in the next room, so I don't need it. Um, there's also a trap tile in front of that chest, so I don't want to actually take it. How many mist pillars do you have until the game explodes? Uh, Panzer Dragoon, we actually fixed that bug, so uh, it's not a problem anymore. Hey, Wappy, how's it going? GG on the race earlier today, by the way. Okay, so after getting through the pillar maze, we have a force trap tile here that we're going to have some nightmares. And vanilla nightmares... Oh, they are runnable. I, I forgot about that. Um, but I've got ice three, so I'm going to take them out. Uh, so, yeah, Sebus man, uh, Sebo man, the... Uh, the, the pillars, there used to be a bug in the game that, as you kept taking entrances, there was essentially a stack that kept track in the game of uh, how deep you were in the, in the dungeon. And uh, eventually it would become too great and you would softlock if you went to the menu. Um, I don't know full details if Meridian BC is here in chat or Wilkleosis. Yeah, Wilkleosis uh, says if you went through about 30 pillars or so and hit the menu, the game would softlock. Yes. Uh, so, man, I wouldn't say the game was poorly coded. There are a lot of bugs. Um, some of the things that Nasir did are, uh, quite frankly, astounding. Um... So, uh, take it for what it is. Um, so we picked up the opal bracelet in here. I didn't uh, talk about that just yet. Uh, the opal bracelet is going to give 34 absorb. It is the best armor available in the game for red mage, white mage, black mage, or black belt uh, for, uh, for absorb. It does not provide any resists. So there's still an argument for white shirt or black shirt. Um, but uh, 
Yes. Entropor fixed that, which was an ordeal itself. Hey, how about that? I like that. Um, I Did anybody ever check Meridian if you intentionally tried to just, like, loop and loop and loop in Ice Cave if that happened? Like, could that technically have been a thing? Okay, so uh, this trap tile on the way out of Ortiels in Vanilla is zombie dragons. Um, you could fight them. They're uh, a great source of experience points. Could happen in any warp stairs. Could happen in Corneria Castle. Interesting. Okay. All right, so uh, we got through Castle Ordeals. So we got our crown. So now we can follow up the crown quest chain, or we could go do um, Ice Cave. Uh, I guess since I'm doing a really strange routing, no, that doesn't work either, does it? I'm. Why am I here? I'm in a. I'm in a place. Uh, okay. Uh, let's. Let's go do our uh, fetch quest chain. Let's get the uh, the crown chain out of the way. Um, we'll go talk to the kindly old king in the Northwest Castle. Is that how you got the chaos running hack at the beginning of the game? Uh, yes, Meridian BC pointing out that there's always work going on uh, in our Final Fantasy uh, randomizer community. Um, Will or Meridian, would one of you guys mind posting a link to the uh, uh, Discord here in the in the chat? Uh, in case anybody is checking out the, the run but is not in the, the community already. The kindly old king is Astos. This is a surprise. Said nobody ever. Uh, ICB, I believe that it is um, C++. Or, uh, no, sorry, C Sharp. C Sharp that the devs program in. I think. Thank you, Wappy. You might not be Willer Meridian, but I appreciate it. <clears throat> yes, yeah, Man, uh, definitely Meridian or Nitz or somebody else uh, would be much more well-versed on the uh, randomizer code base itself. Um, but it is all open source and you can check it out online. Um, and anybody is welcome to contribute to it. All right, so getting some of this stuff out of the way now. So one thing to know, if you ever find yourself needing to, uh, not not feeling strong enough to go ahead and complete your run, is uh, you can always go continue to check chests um, if you feel like you need more gear. Oh, right. I did check those chests earlier because I wanted to, uh, wanted to have checked all of the chests before going into Marsh Cave. All right. Time to head south and go to Elfland and get the Mystic Key. Um, we will hit up most of the key lock chests. I'm not going to go back into uh, Marsh Key Locked uh, because I there's just way too far to go for three chests. 
Um, and I will probably not hit up the Temple of Fiends key lock chests. Uh, but otherwise, we'll go ahead and uh, check out all the other chests and just uh, get all the gear that we need. Um, it is technically faster after you get the Mystic Key to warp out and go back into the castle to come up to check these chests. Uh, I'm just trying to commentate my own run, and therefore I'm uh, not thinking about all of my options. Power Gauntlet is amazing to find. Um, as mentioned earlier, Saber is a wonderful spell, and Power Gauntlet casts Saber. So, um, that is going to be very, very helpful for the end game, and uh, it guarantees that we are going to have the offense needed uh, to be able to take out late game fiends, even if they had crazy stats. Which in this case, they won't. They're, they're only going to have 130% moat at maximum. Um, but that can still be a, a decent amount. So. Um, key lock chests. Yeah, JLo, this has been a, a very free seed. And uh, great, great for playing casually. Uh it would also probably be great if you saw this in a run, in a race, uh, but certainly my, my time is not indicative of uh, something that I would put up in a, a race of a seed like this, um, as I'm doing a, a lot of talking and uh, floater. Okay, well now I'm very glad that we followed up the uh, the crown into key quest chain. Um, Okay, we don't need the chain armor anymore, and uh, yeah, now with finding that floater, uh, it is time to go over to get the airship. Uh, so the fastest way to get to the airship from here, um, there is a little known port over on the uh, southeast section here that is linked to this river system. And uh, that's going to be our fastest way to get over there. This is going to take us over to Crescent Lake. And then from Crescent Lake, we can just go south to Ryukon Desert. Yes, Jello pointing out that uh, since we're going to get the airship, this is when the game really starts opening up. So now we have a lot of interesting decisions to make. Um, just stopping in here to, to save and get spell charges and such. Uh, time to go get our airship. Now, uh, way back when, we got the tail. Um, I'm also, like, not doing all of the things on this tracker. So we talked to the Kindly Old King, we talked to Matoya, we talked to the Elf Prince. We got the crown and turned it into the Mystic Key. Uh, we got the floater. We got the canoe. Um, yes. There we go. Uh, I am not used to running with a tracker, so you'll have to forgive me. So, uh... I have not done a good job of keeping up with that. So, now we have the airship. We have the cube. We do not have Oxiel, so we can't go do Sea Shrine. We do not have the rod, so we can't go do uh, all of Earth Cave. And we do not have the slab to go get the chime, so we can't do um, we can't do Mirage and Sky. However, we have the tail, and we definitely want to go get our class change. So we're going to start there. What are we going to do after we class change, though? Well, we have two more incentive locations to be able to hit up. We have Ice Cave, and we have the Waterfall. Um, both of those are going to have uh, progression. Well, at least one of those is going to have progression. Um, so we'll need to kind of think about, do we want to go to Ice Cave or do we want to go to Waterfall? And I would say with the spells that we have available to us uh, and the key items available to us, 
I would prefer to do Ice Cave first because I would rather route in Waterfall when I have the Oxyale. So that way I could ideally do all of the Onrak Continent in one go. I would like to go hit up Waterfall, uh, talk to the robot, get the key item there, and then go into Sea Shrine immediately. Um, so to try to facilitate that, we're going to get our class change, uh, equip our wonderful new armor that is available to us. And then... Uh, I guess from there we'll go to uh, Waterfall. Um, you know what? I actually don't need the Power Gauntlet just yet for Saber. So I'm going to equip the Opal Bracelet or uh, Opal Bracer to the uh, Knight just for Absorb and the Power Bonk to uh, the Ninja also for Absorb. This is going to give us a lot of Absorb to be able to, to go through dungeons. So 72, 48, 27, 34. Now all of our people are able to take hits pretty well. Uh, we're level 15, so unfortunately we missed the class promotion by one level. Um, so we're going to be a little bit slow getting to our uh, spell charges. But that's okay. It's not, not too big of an issue. While we're here at the Cardia Islands, I'm going to route in the uh, Cardia Island checks. And we're immediately paid off by finding a ribbon. And the defense sword. Okay. Um, free seed is free. For all of forever. And while the black mage is never actually going to uh, attack, I'm going to go ahead and give him that silver knife just because um, this this seed is like way too generous um, I, I don't even know what to do with myself I've been playing league flags and not checking many chests and not having gear um, I'm not sure what to do in this situation because I have too much gear help I found more good gear <laughs> what <laughs> what even is this uh, I guess we'll hang on to the opal armor and sell it for cash. More opal gear that I can't equip. Flame armor. Okay. Um, this is this is seriously nutty. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, Jello. What even is this seed? This seed is, it, it's way, way too kind. Certainly way kinder than any seed that I'm used to playing. Um, yeah. Th this is apparently the freest of free seeds. Oh, hey, look. Opal Helm. Agree with you after playing League Flags to see the CG is <laughs> what the heck do I do? Yeah, it, like, like not even kidding. This is like if I had this kind of gear and I was playing in one of these League Flags that we've been doing, I would be like, why am I not in Topher? What am I doing? Like, stop checking chests. <laughs> uh, this is just, it's nutty. Totally nutty. Um, so let's take a moment to stop and go get good spells for everybody. Now that we're uh, about to start learning spells with our knight and our ninja. Yeah, I'm never going to cast harm three, let's be honest. So largely this is going to be a repeat of the spells that we've already been picking up. Um, just now they're going to be on more characters.
Wait, what? Oh, I just selected the wrong character. Yeah, I, I will check here for sauce. Maybe I maybe I just forgot and didn't see them or something. Um, it's certainly possible. I know that sauce are normally here in uh, vanilla. I think it's either here or Elfland. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Yeah, no, no softs. Okay, so I wasn't crazy. They're in Elfland and Vanilla. Okay. Well, I think Elfland only had heal potions. No, JLo, aren't aren't they also available in Onrak in Vanilla? So I was pretty sure that there were two uh, shops in uh, Vanilla that had it. <clears throat> okay, so... What else? All right, quick. I'm not I'm not crazy, right? They actually were not available here. Yeah, no. They were not available here. Alrighty. So starting to get higher level, so we'll go ahead and pick up some uh, high level spells. Sure. That's kind of amusing. Brack and Soft on the same spell slot. Okay, so... Now that we've done our shopping, let's go ahead and go to Ice Cave, which should be a relatively quick check. Man, this is, like, this is such a joke. My spells are way too good. My equipment is way too good. Fantasy Rando Karma will catch up to you on your next seed. Um, maybe, or maybe it's paying me back for my, my normal karma. So, you know, keep that in mind. <laughs> ICB-16. What kind of damage are we doing on our melee attackers? So the ninja's still doing mediocre damage. Uh, really need like a katana or something to get him into the the time where he's doing uh, good damage. That is one thing that I kind of need is a good weapon. Um, for all the good armor and spells that we've got, um, the weapon department is a little bit lacking. Um, now, to be fair, this is kind of first world problems because I have all of the spells that I need to in order to be able to get through dungeons. So... Yeah, a Bane Sword, a Katana, um... Any, any sort of good weapon would, uh, 
would really go a long way to helping that ninja out. Yeah, Adamant would be another great pickup. Okay, so here, this is uh, kind of an infamous room in uh, Ice Cave. Um, infamous because normally you have to jump down one of these holes and go through the uh, go through the lower level and then drop down and then you'll fight the eye tile and uh, then you'll be able to check that chest in the middle that normally has the floater. Here, I'm going to step down in this one hole and I'm going to cast warp and I'm going to check all three of these chests. Okay, so bottle, pro ring, and uh, a house. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess I'll go ahead and check all the chests here. Uh, there's not going to take me long to do this. Plus, I'm not going to have to do a, a whole nother loop. I'll just check all the chests and then get out. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Seven Man, uh, I, I would take a Vorpal. Um, while I don't give it the uh, levels of praise that you see out of, say, Wilkleosis, Vorpal is a great sword, and I would be more than happy to have it in this situation. Um, in a race setting, would I continue the Ice Cave dive with Warp? If this were a race setting, um, there are a good number of things I would have done differently. Um, but in particular, in this Ice Dive, if this was a rape setting, uh, a Warp... Little, little, little. If this was a race setting, I would check those incentive chests see the bottle, and warp on out. Um, there's not really much more reason for me to be here. Uh, I'm just checking them because this has been kind of a casual, just have fun and play the seed run. Well, happy you finished tonight with a Vorpal? Yeah, checking Ice K or uh, Titan's, Titan's Trove. I was surprised we didn't see more people on stream uh, check the Titan's Trove. Seeing that ruby right off the bat, uh, I would have checked that immediately. Uh, we got a Sun Sword. Sun Sword is good. That's definitely going to help out the ninja in the offense category. Okay, and we got ambushed by a pack of Frost Wolves, so this is a bit annoying. Uh, we're taking quite a bit of damage here. Frost rolls with frost, who'd have thought? Fortunately for us, though, we have life two, and we have cure four, and cure four, and cure four. And just like that, our whole party is up and running again. Uh, I'm going to send you a video of a match to watch the amazing attempts to address this particular question. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, right? There are, there are two sides to it because number one, uh, you could warp on out and uh, save yourself some time from going through the rest of the dungeon. On the other hand, oh, I'm not paying attention to what I'm fighting. Um, I'm not smart. Uh, on the other hand. You could skip those chests and potentially save yourself a lot of time going through the dungeon, so. A lot of things to consider when you're doing it. And, like, holy cow, this is seriously the freest of seeds. Like, what?
Exactly, JLo. Age of Shield what? Like... Okay, you know what? At this point... At this point, I need to get... Oh, hey! How's it going, Falconic? Nice of you to join us in here. Um, we have the freest of seeds. Um, like, my, my equipment is way too good. I don't know what to do with myself. And, uh, yeah, our, our spell selection has been amazing. Um, okay, so, I mentioned earlier that Ice and Volcano were, or uh, Ice and Waterfall were going to have progression for us. And I mentioned not wanting to do Waterfall until I had the, um, the Oxiel. And we just found the bottle inside Ice Cave. So, I am thinking... Uh, that my plan of action is going to be to go turn in the bottle, get the Oxiel, and then go do uh, Waterfall and Sea Shrine while uh, I'm over there. Um, because at this point, I am going to start getting some spell charges and get some levels, and our options for battle are just, like, way too good. Um, so I feel no fear in doing Sea Shrine first. Um, if you were trying to play this a little bit more safely. Uh, you could go do Volcano before doing Sea Shrine. Um, just to make sure that you get all of the... Uh, okay, Dark and Sun are crap. Um, just to make sure you get all of the, uh, the items and equipment that you can along the way. Um, in, in this seed, um, I have way more than I know what to do with, so that's not an issue. You know what? Just because I can. Because I can. I'm going to buy this buckler. Because why not? If we're going to go nuts on equipment, then we might as well really go nuts on equipment. Cat claw? Oh. I wanted a cat claw. What do we have for level 8 spells? Well, level 8 temper feels bad. I'm going to go ahead and pick it up. I probably won't get any charges for it. It's not until level 25 that my black mage is going to get spell charges for that. It's soft potions! Oh my god! Reroll and start over, no cat claw. Well, the cat claw's got to be in one of these shops. Um, it's probably in... Uh, Elfland? I think that's the weapon shop that I didn't check. No, Melmond. I'll bet it's in Melmond. But heck, at this point, I feel like I should, uh, I should just really shoot for the sky and get myself the ultimate endgame gear, uh, and have the Excalibur on the knight, have the Katana on the ninja, the Vorpal on the red wizard, and the Masmian on the black mage, and really just go crazy. Yeah, but I wanted it now, so I'd restart. <laughs> Is that how that works? I'll keep that in mind. Uh, yes, Hypas Nova. In this seed, uh, in this flag set, the beginner flag set, the fetch quest rewards are not randomized. So talking to the fairy is always going to give me the Oxiel. Uh, talking to the elf prince is always going to give me the mystic key and so on. All right. This shouldn't take long. At this point, we've got a party that is way too strong. They talk about free tiles during transition from Canoe to Land. I have not yet, but Panzer Dragon, thank you for reminding me. Um, I will talk about it. Hey, we just got a Group 8 Gasty encounter. We're going to fight this guy. Well, we actually have to fight this guy, but I would fight this guy even if I didn't have to fight this guy. Yeah. Uh, 
that is a very rare encounter for this area. Um, in fact, it is as rare to see a single gas dragon here as it is to see Warmech on the Bridge of Destiny. Yeah, Wappy, I think that might be my first time personally having that encounter, uh, the single Gasty here in Waterfall. Like, it's one of those things where I knew it could happen, but I'm pretty sure I have not had it happen until just now. Hey, you know what? We were talking about that Bane Sword earlier. Guess what we just found? The Bane Sword! Really, robot? Really? So, uh... That's a thing. Well, so the robot had cheeks. Um, so what that tells me is that the slab chest in the mermaids is going to have the slab because that's the way that we're going to get to the Mirage and Sky Castle. So that way I can get... Wait, did somebody give me the rod? Okay, hold on a second. So I need this. Oh, I've already got the cube. Right, 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 right. So, no, wait, but where's Mazza? Did I ever talk to Sarda? Did I forget to talk to Sarda? I think I forgot to talk to Sarda. Okay. I think I forgot to talk to Sarda, and uh, that's uh, something that I forgot to do. I don't know Well, I'm working on finding the Vorpal. I'm going to find it, don't you worry. Hooray for picking up level 7 and 8 spells we're never actually going to use. I haven't checked Sarda. Yeah, JLo, you're right. I haven't checked Sarda, so that's, uh, that's my bad. Um... That's what I get for uh, trying to commentate a bunch while trying to do this run. Um, although, hey, I have a tracker in front of me, and that tells me whether or not I've checked things. So uh, if I was actually being a smart cookie and uh, tracking properly, then I would have all the things. Sarda, easy to forget in FFR, just like Dr. Rune. Yep. Exactly, LCB. Uh, we, we do learn a lot from mistakes. And uh, I will be the, the first to admit that I make plenty of them. Sorry, the voice is uh, a little bit hoarse. I've been talking a lot today.
Hey, the wizard staff. Wizard staff casts Confuse, which again confuses everybody in the middle of battle. So again, not a whole lot to really talk about. Yeah, wizard staff is sold for money, uh, pretty much. So, what you got for me in center chest? Vanilla slab. Prefer to buy fear and use that on carry. Uh, Confuse is status elemental, Panzer Dragon. Um, so it is uh, the weakness of carry. Hey, it's a ruby. Oh yes, Wappy. If we're going for lol percent, then yes, fear is, in fact, funnier. Okay. So time to go left side, and time to take out Kraken, and finally actually take out a fiend in this fight, or uh, in this flight, in this seed. Wow, I can't, can't think, can't talk. Um, uh, no, JLo, not necessarily. Uh, Rod does not have to be vanilla, because. Um, Sarda could, in fact, give us the Mazmune, and the Rod could be in the Adamant Chest in Sky Castle. Uh, Wappy, I am playing a the, the beginner flag set. Um, also, seed and flags are in the uh, title of the stream. Or at least they should be. If they're not, let me know and I'll fix that. Gil. Yeah, so I had totally planned to talk about like what enemies to fight and what enemies not to fight and all of that, but then we got low-level nuke, and it became run-run nuke strats, and we just incidentally get EXP as we're going through dungeons. This ended up being a very linear seed and not a, a great seed for talking about uh, making decisions and routing and 
how, how to do things. It kind of just became a, a paint by numbers. Let's give you nuke. You can nuke all of the things. Double trap tile fight? Oh, yeah. Um, so that, that fourth chest Panzer Dragon in the, uh, Panzer Dragoon in the top right, um, I didn't take that because in order to even check that chest, I have to take, uh, two trap tiles, one on the way in, one on the way out, and, uh, I could get decent EXP from that fight, um, but I really don't need it. Um, I, I don't need gear, I don't need really the EXP coming from the fight, so... Yeah, Wappy, I could I could burn a warp, but that's meh. In a, a vanilla encounter rate, I might be gaining as many fights as I would save if I warped. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't really prepare coming into Kraken because um, I, I don't. Oh, I don't have uh, Brack charges on you. But you have Brack. Um, I've kind of just been not really paying attention to this dungeon. This has become lol strats. Uh, hopefully we get to break uh, Kraken into pieces, show off the fact that he's not resistant to Brack. Um, otherwise, we'll kill him with damage, and it's fine. Eh, whatever. Fiend one down, and we light the water orb, and we drunkenly walk places. Um, so earlier, uh, we were mentioning that stepping on or off of the canoe uh, is another one of those instances where it does not increment the step counter. So no matter how many times I step in or out of my boat, uh, I will never actually get into an encounter. So what that means you can do is, see I've got like a bend right here, you could use a routing like this to save yourself several steps without getting into an encounter. Yeah, drunk on Oxio, that's, that's it. Yeah, cat claw. Woot. It's still terrible uh, damage. But uh, that's fine. The moment is over. <laughs> yep. Uh, pity by <laughs> pity by means nothing. Ah, uh, you know, Wappy, whatever. Well, I gotta be like that. Alright, now we'll actually talk to Sarda. And, uh, not derp and forget. Um, I guess we'll equip the Mazmune on you for now. Uh, because I don't have any better weapons. Uh, what does the Cat Claw do? Well, it does um, the most damage of any non mazamune weapon for a Black Belt, or a Black Mage. Uh, and, like, two hits for 101, that's respectable, but you get it so late in the game that it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it doesn't do anything. Because at this point, two hits for 101 damage, that's like pocket change. I didn't translate the slab.
Um, largely wappy, I would agree with you, unless you are intentionally trying to conserve spell charges. Um, if you, like, know that you're not in danger in the fight, and, uh, like, if I got to the point where my weapon selection was uh, Excal, Katana, Vorpal, Maza, um, I very likely might just melee things that were uh, four enemies in a single fight, rather than worrying about uh, rather than worrying about casting spells. Excuse me for just a moment, folks. Okay, sorry about that. Black Wizard's better casting item magic than Swing Cat Claw. Um, yeah, pretty much Volcanic. I I like Cat Claw. It's it's funny, but uh, it's certainly not an effective use of a Black Mage's time or Black Wizard's time in combat. All right, so we got our uh, we got our chime. Nothing left now but to uh, go do all the Fiend dungeons. And uh, we're already right here, so let's start with doing uh, Sky. So, Tyros are good EXP. Um, generally, I fight them. Sometimes I just feel like running away, though. gonna go ahead and just use up uh, all of my uh, tents just so that way I can sort my inventory a little better um, you know what we'll check these chests why not let's see what kind of uh, shenanigans this seed has for us here since it's already given us basically everything 
You're a monster, also I killed him because I'm also a monster. Yeah, I mean, I like me some Tyro steak. Uh, it, it makes a real nice juicy burger, let me tell you. Okay, so the enemies in Sky Castle and Mirage um, are fairly uh, beefy, but they're also really, really good for experience points. Um, so Sky Castle, if you find yourself needing uh, some levels, can be a place to go. Um, and if you have things like level 3 elemental magics, um, nuke, fade, that sort of thing... Uh, it can be a lot of ex experience, and uh, it, it's not that difficult to get it. Um, found ourselves that katana. So that's two of the four that we want. We just need a vorpal, and we need to find the adamant yet. I mean... If you're going to just give me a free wizard fight, I'm going to take them. I want to take their XP. I do indeed. Man, I'm so used to playing with progressive experience points that getting, like, almost a thousand from those vampires feels really low. You're having way too much fun typing during my run? <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, LCB. So, um, the infamous less than, greater than chess, because of the shape of the chess layout, um, it's ten chests that are all in fairly close proximity, and it doesn't take that many steps out of your way to go check them. Um, so it is often a good idea to go check them, um, and it w we're also going to do that here. Mage Staff casts Fire 2. Opal Shield is Lull. Zeus Gauntlet, huh? I'm pretty sure that Red Wizard can equip that. There we go. Don't drop that cloth on the ground. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a filthy litterer, just so you all know. Just dropping garments on the ground. Um, I'm just going to uh, melee this blue dragon to death because I just, why not? I don't need to blow any spells here. So if you're going to check... Oh, I'm definitely happy to see any eye fights. Uh, that is literally candy at this point. Um, if you're going to check the chests in Sky 1, the really efficient way to do it is to check a room and then warp back to the entryway. So now I can just warp and I save myself steps uh, before going on to the next room. Uh, moving usable items to the left side of the inventory makes them easier to use in battle. Um, I would argue that it's easiest to use the top and bottom. Um, but yeah, uh, definitely good to have them in an easily accessible area.
Don't really want to stop for just two bad men. Don't do like me and get used to something being in the second slot and then move it and then proceed to you. Yeah. Yeah, Wappy, that has totally happened to me where I've had something in one particular slot for a, a very long time and I move it and then I, like, phantom you, try to use the item in the wrong spot. It's like, wh why? Why is it not using it? I don't understand. Um, slimes are actually pretty decent for EXP. It is actually very rare to see them. Um, so it's a, a little bit surprising that I found this fight, but uh, why not? We'll fight it. Use so many ribbons in battle. <laughs> yeah. How much fun to watch, so? Uh, good, Panzer Dragon. I'm glad you're having fun. I'm glad you're enjoying the run. And uh, I hope that it has been uh, uh, helpful. And I hope that you're learning stuff. Oh, Gurnagas are the enemy that have Ruse normally. Interesting. I did not know that. Also, apparently, we're just going to ambush, like, every uh, Gurnaga fight ever. Yeah, look at that black wizard contributing to battle. Uh, black wizard melee strats. Learning on a Sunday night, what have we become? Uh, you know, it, it's good. It's good to learn things and good to uh, make an effort to try and improve. So, you know. Don't ever view learning as a bad thing, LCB. Although this seed has kind of become lol percent the seed. Because seriously, this has been way too generous. I should definitely be respecting the fact that evil men could show up in Sky Castle and uh, heal some hit points. I don't know that they can. I don't know which floor they actually show up normally, um, but. Uh, Draw, thank you very much for the, the follow. I appreciate that. Thanks for showing the support. I also really hope that I say your name correctly. Um, you haven't yelled at me, so I'm going to assume unless you yell at me or correct me that I'm, I'm doing at least an okay job pronouncing it. is what I'm living for. Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, learning is what I live for. I'm always asking questions on streams and interrupting runs. Oh yeah, LCB, uh, definitely anytime if you see that I'm running and you want to uh, ask me some questions, uh, obviously if I'm in the middle of the race, I can't stop and answer you. Um, but if you catch me just casually streaming, uh, I'm always down to answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, I...
feel like I, I do a, a pretty good job um, of racing, and uh, my knowledge of Final Fantasy is uh, fairly good. Um, so I hope that I can impart any of that to uh, to you guys. I am still doing a terrible job of tracking. There we go. Now I'm actually tracking the things. I promise I will actually, like, click the buttons one of these days. Oh good, LCB. I'm glad that it is uh, good in info and entertaining, and I 100% agree about the FFR community. Um, I had been lurking in the community for a, a good while before I actually started chiming in and talking to people. And uh, I wish that I had not been a lurker for so long uh, because the second that I started talking to people in the community, uh, I realized just how awesome this community was. Um, so very, very happy to have started to, to talk to people. And uh, that pushed me to want to get into racing and doing things. And I've been very pleasantly surprised um, and uh, happy to find out that I actually can, can do okay. And uh, I'm trying real hard in this league to, uh, to give these vets a run for their money. So again, I'm, I'm really just checking these chests out of wall percent at this point because I think it would just be funny to have like the ideal weapon set up. Um, I absolutely don't really need this gear. I'm just kind of having fun with the seed at this point. Um, these chests, however, even in a race setting, even if I feel like I'm ahead, are almost always worth checking because it takes so little time to come over here and check them that even if there's nothing in them you're not down on time and if there is something over here and you skip them uh you are likely losing time uh well in this case it's just a second katana thanks i've already got one i don't really need a second And at this point, I'm just, like, not even interested in fighting airs. I've been just casually fighting basically everything that's come up, but I'm really done with this. Did I play FF Vanilla before getting into Randomizer? Yes, Droith. Uh, I actually played Vanilla for a very, very long time. Um, Final Fantasy is actually the game that got me into uh, video games. Um, so, true story for a second... Uh, when I was, like, real, real young, like, when I was, like, two years old or whatever, uh, my dad was playing Nintendo and was playing uh, Final Fantasy, and I loved it, and uh, it is the game that got me into playing video games, um, because I, I saw my dad playing it, it was really cool, and then I finally became old enough to actually, like, understand what was going on and be able to actually play it myself. And it took me a really, really long time to beat because I could never find the Desert Caravan uh, because, you know, I, I didn't think to check out this one weird tile out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I played it and I loved it and that was holy crap forever ago. So, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Alright, so we're here. Um, time to kill Tiamat. Ultimate disrespect engage. Oh, uh, really? None of them? How about this round? Come on. Broken to pieces. Yeah. 
Hooray, fiend weaknesses! Oh, oops. Dang it! The beams are strong with you. Uh, yeah. So about that, Wappy. We're not done memeing yet. We are by no means done memeing yet. I, I guess I could save. Just in case. Uh, also... Garbage, 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 garbage. This is all garbage. Uh, no, I'm not throwing anything in the volcano. Uh, but just not done memeing yet. Um, so, I'm not going to check every chest here, because I, I really I, I really should have been done checking chests forever ago, but um, whatever. Uh, I'm just looking for Adamant and Vorpal at this point. Hey, it's Adamant! So there's one. Um... So, I would like to find the Vorpal. Is that sadness, Wappy, in regards to me not throwing stuff in the volcano? I'm not, I'm not memeing hard enough to throw things into the volcano. Oh no, it's Scorch. Whatever will I do? But, Wappy, I haven't found a Vorpal to throw into the volcano. I haven't found a Vorpal yet. Also, I already said I want to actually equip the Vorpal. Yeah, but I, I want to actually equip the Vorpal. I want to have every best sword available in the game equipped at the same time on my party. Because I have a party that can do it. I want to use Excal, Katana, Vorpal, and Mazamune all in the same party. And now my chat has become a meme fight. Yay, meme fights! More like Snorpal. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like that one, draw. Well, gentlemen, there's not many, uh... <laughs> Troth has been excommunicated from the Church of Warful. Um, I, yeah, I'm not... 
I'm not sure you know what excommunicated means, Falconic, because uh, it sounds like he wasn't a, a member of that congregation. He never showed up. <laughs> So what, did you did you force his entry just so that way you could kick him out? <laughs> We're all born into the light. Oh god, fuck attic. Oh man. Uh Uh, we'll throw confused strats. It's probably not going to land, but we'll throw it. Eh, confused. Look at that. I'm still going to first turn carry because, uh, lol. Church of six hits six damage. <laughs> Dead gyred hand. Those are nice emotes. I like that. Got an adamant. Feels good, man, even if it's a light tap on the shoulder. Oh, uh, you guys. Can't we all just get along? Nobody likes gargoyles. Go away. Either I have a weapon that can be shared by everyone than one only for selfish meathead character archetypes. To be fair, that's really the Iron Nunchuck you're talking about. That is definitely the Selfish Meathead right there. Because see, the Vorpal can at least be used on a Red Wizard. No consoles with the Game Changer. The katana really should have a better graphic than just like an orange fucking dagger though. For real. That short that sword is so tiny. Cave is not very exciting. It's still the Earth Cave. We've been here before. Finally getting to, to go past the rod, though, so that's that's cool. That's a thing.
All right. Cabin Pro Ring. Does anybody need a Pro Ring? I mean, you could equip a Pro Ring, but you have the Zeus Gauntlet. Nah. I don't need that Pro Ring. Lots of garbage. Yeah, I agree, Drawith. That was that's a good sprite for the katana. Um that, that would have been uh, a good one to use. So one of these days, one of these days we're going to be done with all these stupid fights. This is why I, I really can't stand uh, 1.0 encounter rate anymore. Well, not many opportunities left to find the Vorpal. Will and Falconic, I might have to disappoint. <clears throat> Alright, so, about to fight Lich, about to have our fourth orb. So that's Bueno. We've also managed to find every key item in the game. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I, I said that I'm trying to find the Vorpal, but I don't have many opportunities left to find it. And now we go for ultimate disrespect. And we're going to throw a Lich down in a hole. Because remember that part when I said the undead are not immune to Quake? Yeah. That's not limited to trash undead. The cake is a lie, Wappy. But he totally bought it. Hook, line, and sinker. Now, now, draw. Don't put words in my mouth. I definitely didn't say that. I'm trying, Will. Don't worry. I'm trying. I'm trying to find it for you. Uh, I'm definitely not going to uh, go to the Keylock Marsh chests or check uh, the chest that I skipped in Volcano or Sea Shrine, so... If we find it in Temple of Fiends, we find it. If not, we don't. Um, I will take some time to show off all of the chest locations in Temple of Fiends, so that way, uh, for anybody curious, you know where they all are in the future.
Hey! Oh no, is it's damage poison? I should feel more threatened. I am going to Temple of Fiends. It is, you know, it can be scary. Uh, but I just, I feel no fear right now. This has been a very strange seed, and we've gotten way too many good items. Yeah, I will check the chest on the fire floor, Wappy. I said I would go ahead and show off where all the chest locations are. Yeah, I mean, Vorpal could be in the vanilla Masmune chest. We'll, we'll figure it out. Unless it's in one of the dungeons I skipped, because I'm not going to a different dungeon at this point. Remember to show off the defensive nuke blade. Uh, no, Simnoi, we're not playing with item magic shuffled. Uh, item magic is vanilla, so the defense sword is the defense sword. It casts ruse. Yep, no, no castable nuke items today. <laughs> it was all a ruse. Yes, I do get it. Aha. Worms. Worms are really nice. These are juicy, juicy experience points. Cinnamon. <laughs> Oh, this is a unrunnable fight. <laughs> no, please don't kill Falconic. I'd prefer there not be murder in my chat. the enemy of humanity. Hey, Falconic is not a bird. Falconic is a pleasant human being. No, I'm defending Falconic, not birds. Birds are jerks. I totally agree with that. I'm just asking that you don't kill Falconic because he's not a, actually a bird. He's okay then. I should give him advice. <laughs> uh, yes. Thank you for that, Sim. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I do highly recommend the uh, the playing of the challenge seeds. The challenge seeds are fun. The only reason I haven't been playing them lately is because of League. Uh, oh yeah, I, I totally should have been done by now. I, to be totally honest, I could have beaten the seed like at least an hour ago if I was actually trying. Um, I've been having too much fun. Uh, sorry, Falconic. <laughs> also, we're going to throw Lich down a crack again. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thinks I'm a real quack. Uh, yeah, probably. 
You guys are quacking me up. So, for those of you that don't know, there are actually chests on this floor. So there is a close chest and a far chest in each of these rooms. He's quack, what am I? I guess either of these can get to it. That's a white shirt. Eh. Yeah, you're right. Going on the top side and then going down would have been fewer steps. I I'm taking extra steps and leading to getting into extra encounters. Look at me and my concern for this fact. Yes, casual percent, exactly, Drawth. That is very much how I feel right now. Seem to profusely sweating out of concern. Yeah, it totally, Sim. I am uh, I'm completely concerned. Also, how many are giant Agama fights are we going to get into? Because I'm kind of done. Like, I just want to show off the last chest in uh, Temple of Fiends Revisited and uh, move on. So many Agamas. Yes, Wappy, we are going to have all of the encounters still, it seems. Every step from here forward would be an R giant Agma fight. Uh, well, this is. There's no longer any tiles for me to get into that fight, Sim, so. At least from here, it's not going to happen. Um, for anybody wondering, you can technically Quake carry. Um, it has about a 2% chance of landing or something silly like that. Um, but it is technically possible, and the chance is technically better than 3 out of 256. So you could. Quake carry to death. Um, if you were going to do something like that, I would recommend instead going for um, going for something like Hold or Sleep 2, as they will have uh, a better chance of landing. Uh, Wappy, I'm not casting Exit on Chaos, largely because I don't have Exit. Um, also because, like, as soon as we check what's in the Mazamian chest, uh, we're going to finish the seed. Casual level occurs to me that in my uh, casual burning of Ice 3s from my Red Mage, I have 
severely limited the number of Cure 4s that I have left. If this were more than 130%, I might actually care. Um, I mean, I could rearrange my party, I could do things that are safer, um, but I'm just going to do crack to death. Time to go check the uh, Masmoon chest. Um, it is notable that evil men do have nuke. So that fight is actually dangerous. Wah, wah. No Vorpal for us today. Uh, is this vanilla? Is what vanilla about it? Um, Falconic specifically. This is beginner percent. Or, uh, uh, it's the beginner flag set, rather. Um, so a lot of things are very vanilla-ish. Yes, evil men have X for then nuke. You're right. Um, it is not a first turn nuke, but... Um... Um, I don't see a really good reason not to just, uh, swing a nuke here. I mean, I suppose I probably should fast. What level is fast on? I don't even remember what level fast is. That's evil, man. Ha <laughs> ha. Man, no iron goals. We got some rare encounters. I was hoping maybe we could get iron goals. I should probably fast Shadow 2018. Yo, that's rude, Zim. Although I did say that, so you know. Okay, so I'm going to pretend that chaos could actually be threatening and, and do things more of the proper way. Um, moving my knight further back in the party and such like that. Um, um, so what do we got? We've got not a lot for you to do, so you're just going to swing. Um, we're going to fast the knight. We're going to... Uh, use the defense sword and throw out some nukes. <clears throat> oh, we actually did get some temper charges. That's cool. go. Throwing out some more tempers. Time to start swinging. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm just going to set this to go.
Um, okay. So, uh, something happened. <laughs> um, well, uh, what did I miss? Did I get nuked? Infernoed? How did my knight die? What happened? <laughs> um, huh. Curious. Oh, I got cracked. And it landed on my knight? That's shitty. Okay. Um, well. I should have moved the, uh... Should have moved the ribbon to the knight. Uh, yeah, Wappy, I have ribbons. I have two ribbons. Um, I just didn't do a smart thing and move them over to the night. Uh, three hits, three damage, five hits, five damage. Okay. Um, so now we improvise. Um, Yeah, I, uh, I might have to be relying on some Bane strats here. Well, especially since it got Cure 4 off. Okay, so, uh... Well, now I look like an idiot. Okay, let's get our head in the game and do Tover right. So, turns out that uh, even on 130%, skills and spells are still nasty. Because they don't care about rolling percentages and such. <clears throat> Chimeras and Jumeras are actually a great source of experience points if you uh, find yourself in Temple of Fiends but still need more levels. That can be a, a good fight to take. Um, Okay. 
So... Yeah, I'll fight you when I get a first strike on you. <clears throat> that would be really silly to turn down for EXP. Time to just punch my way through it. You didn't die? Why not? Die. Lich. And we're still going to throw Lich down a hole. Because it's funny. Bye, Lich. It also has a stupidly good chance of working on Lich. Um, it's something like 28% chance to succeed on Lich 2. And 38 on uh, Lich 1. It's, like, ridiculously high. Not that Lich is very scary to begin with, so it's, like, doesn't really matter if you one-shot him. Hey, I'm not mathing. I'm recalling numbers. I'm not doing the math to figure out the numbers. take much longer for him to math anyway. <laughs> yeah, but Final Fantasy math is more difficult than normal math. I mean, it's, it's not actually hard. It's just the numbers are wonky. It was a great run for this water floor, let me tell you. I will take that any day of the week. So, fortunately, Lit 2 has ridiculously weak spells. Uh, he has a lot of Lit 2s, and he has Ink. Like, if, if Kraken 2 isn't punching you, then you're winning. Just end of story. Now, when he actually randomizes his skill list, then it's a little bit different. game that says adds a bonus one damage at a rate of 15% on a crit that somehow adds one million damage attacks when you have a zero percent chance to hit what <laughs> yeah exactly I'm not sure what you just said sim but okay 
That sounds like a thing in words. And I'm moving on now. Okay, take two. This time we're actually going to move a ribbon to the night like a smart person does. Uh, no, I, I realize it's not a joke. It's just weird. And I, I'm not... I don't fully know. I don't know the context. I don't know what game you're talking about. So, uh... I don't have a lot of input to add to it, so I'm just going to move on. And you still don't have anything good to do. Fast. Nuke. And we're going to power bonk rather than actually using uh, defense charges this time. Yeah, I'm, I'm not about to math on Twitch. All right, so this time we're actually uh, gonna play this like this fight can actually hurt because it can, and uh, don't like walk away and not pay attention to what happens in the battle. Um, that's not smart. So uh, we're gonna throw out some heal threes preemptively. We've also been taking a decent amount of damage. Um, Chaos has a lot of AOE skills, and uh, it's uh, a good way to counteract that is by by using a lot of heal threes. Uh, even preemptively sometimes. Uh, Cure 4 kind of sucks to see, but at least it's out of the way. Um, that means I've got time to go ahead and start doing real damage to him. Uh, we're going to unload the rest of our nukes on him. Um, and then uh, when we're out of nukes, we're going to just start swinging. Probably one or two more rounds and he'll be good, or he'll go down. Terminated. There we go. Um, so I probably could have beaten that in like an hour and 30 minutes, but I was having fun with the seed and uh, it was kind of ridiculous how, uh, how many items that we found so early um, and how many good spells that we had. Um, I think a lot of the better discussion happened earlier on, probably pre feeding dungeons, really, um, where there was actually, like, routing decisions to make, and it wasn't just like, lol, look at all this equipment that we have, this is just whole day and win. Um, but, uh, I, I think there was good information, so I, uh, I hope that some of you learned some things, and, uh, I hope you had fun. So, um... I'm not going to do another run tonight. I had uh, originally considered um, doing kind of a warm-up run and then doing a uh, kind of more advanced run, um, but I'm just... Uh, I spent a lot more time doing this run than I thought I was going to. Um, I did not anticipate spending three hours on this, although it was kind of like just a casual romp through the game, and uh, I enjoyed it, and I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. Um, does anybody have uh, any questions, any things that I didn't necessarily go over that you wanted me to go over? Um, if not, feel free to let me know, and I will uh, try and answer your questions to the best of my ability. Uh, if not on stream now, then uh, later if you think of them later. Um, and if not, then we'll find... Yeah, why aren't you running three more tonight, Falconic Ass? Um...